Good morning everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. It is Sunday, we are in Sydney, it is about 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, Sydney time. A little bit cold, a little bit, um, a little bit chilly today, we are in the midst of winter, so I'm not sure about you guys, but when it comes to these kind of like chilly mornings and you know it just being obviously Sydney's very much a, a summer city it, it thrives during summer and in winter we kind of you know like most people we want to hibernate and I gotta say hibernation can sometimes lead to baking which is not a bad thing and we have seen so many wonderful baking creations especially throughout the lockdown and the quarantine and now here we are in the midst of winter and I, I, I'm not sure about you guys but I'm definitely still wanting to hibernate a little bit in our home and um and, and cook some beautiful things so um this recipe very very exciting i i actually um decided that i wanted to create something like this because i fell in love with a store-bought cracker and um, it was about four dollars fifty for you know maybe 25 crackers it was ridiculously priced and i could sit literally sit there and eat the whole you know box of crackers because it wasn't that much all at once they were gluten free they weren't sugar free they had honey in them which is oh so natural but we also know that honey can do some serious um, damage to our bodies because it has the same reaction now our bodies do our hormone response has the same reaction as if we we're having refined sugar so even when things you know they say they're, they're healthier and yes it is slightly healthier because there's some properties in honey which are healthier but if you are looking at this whole process that we do here which is a sugar-free lifestyle because you wanted to get off your sugar addiction you wanted to get off that roller coaster of hormones that make you feel really really good and then you come crashing back down because you've been on a sugar high then you want to get off even things like honey things like maple guys I know they're all natural but if you want to get your insulin levels down low, you want to keep control of your blood glucose, we need to get off the sugar. <laughs> Simple as that. And guess what? I've created a recipe for these fig and walnut crackers that are, yes, of course they're gluten free because it's the only type of cooking that I do. But they're also sugar free, honey free as well, which is really important. They are dairy free and they are even vegan if you are um, that way inclined. So they are vegan friendly and they taste pretty good so I don't normally start off a class by showing you the end result but let's just whet our appetite shall we <laughs> let's have a little bit of a tease for the morning this is what we're going to be making check it out look at how thin they are and the best part about these fig and walnut crackers of course they're all those wonderful things I just said gluten free sugar free dairy free and vegan friendly but listen to this can you hear that crack oh I just dropped some on the floor that's what you want right you want them to be able to crack and these crackers I'm you know I invented them I invented them because I wanted something to eat with cheese <laughs> but they're so good you can also have them on their own which is really fabulous so this is what we're making today fig and walnut crackers um, they are uh, easy to make but there are a few steps involved in terms of you need to apply a bit of time you don't have to do anything but they do need to rest um, for a little bit so let's get into the recipe because it is definitely one of those ones that you guys are going to absolutely love all right so come on down to my bench let me get myself set up here oh come on down here oh there we go there, there we go um so the first thing that you need to um think about is, is obviously your ingredients and the ingredients are pretty simple there's nothing in here that you haven't seen me cook with before so i'm not intro introducing any new ingredients to you but it likes it it's very simple to do so the first thing is you want to think about your figs because that's basic that's the basis of this recipe right figs now the type of figs that i'm using um they're just obviously dried figs i bought this bag and it's they're also organic which is fabulous i bought these from costco and um, they were on special at costco so um these are the first figs that we are using now just a word if you are a then this may be a little bit of information for you guys if you are a true vegan if you are a true vegan, some vegans will say that they don't eat figs because um, wasps actually, every fig um, has a wasp that needs to go in there and to um, pollinate it. That's how a fig basically matures. So every single fig has had at some point a wasp inside of it. So true vegans, would you believe, do not eat figs. So if you're a true, true, true vegan, this may be one you want to swap out the 
fruit for something, the dried fruit for something else. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from doing it with apricots if you are a true vegan. I prefer the taste of figs. I love how they're not overly sweet when they're in their dried state, which is great. So you want to take up 100, and, um, 100 grams of figs here. And what I have done is I have soaked them in boiling water. So you need to do that for 10 minutes. So soak your dried figs in boiling water for 10 minutes. That just helps to soften them up. That's the first step you do. While those are soaking, you can start thinking about the dry ingredients. And the dry ingredients that we've got today is, first we're gonna be using almond flour. If you want to do a nut-free version, there is nothing stopping you from swapping out the flowers here as well. So you could do sunflower seed flour, you could do sesame seed flour, it's completely up to you. Um, I'm just going to be using almond flour and we're going to be adding in 100 grams which is 3.5 ounces of almond flour and yes if you um, want you can also do this with almond meal so you don't have to use the flour you can use the almond meal as well so flour goes in first I'm also going to be using a bit of gluten-free flour so this is just a plain gluten-free flour mix that I um, got from the supermarket I know some people make their own gluten-free flour mix, which is absolutely awesome if you do make your own. But <clears throat> I just bought a plain gluten-free flour mix. It's 100 grams again, which is, once again, 3.5 ounces of our gluten-free flour. Goes in there. Perfect. Next dry ingredient we're going to think about is a little bit of baking soda or bicarb. And we just want to add in one teaspoon. One teaspoon. And make sure that that teaspoon is level, so you don't want to heap. So you want a level teaspoon. You don't want to get a taste of like, you know, sometimes you can taste a metallic taste in your baking. Chances are you've put in too much baking soda. So make sure, please, that that is a level teaspoon of baking soda because we don't want it to taste like metal. That's just bleh, not my favorite. About a half a teaspoon of salt goes in there as well. Half a teaspoon. And then we're also going to add in some xanthan gum. As you guys know, that is the binder. So that helps to keep everything together. So a really important step here is to add in your xanthan gum. Oh yeah, about that much, which is about a teaspoon. <laughs> and then, as long as it's all done, I can now throw that away. I got some more. Don't worry, I've got some more. So give that a bit of a, give that a, bit of a stir. Just, you know, nothing too dramatic. This, does not, this recipe does not require any equipment, which is kind of cool too. You can do everything by hand, and it's pretty easy to do. So um, I like recipes that are easy to do. I honestly do. And as, as I was saying, the, 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 the hardest thing about this recipe is it does take a bit of time. Like you can't turn around and bake them and eat them in half an hour. You actually have to wait a little bit, which can be really difficult, I know. So now that that's well mixed through, um, you know, you could also, if you want to, I just noticed I had a few lumps in my, my flour. There's nothing stopping you from giving that flour a bit of a, a bit of a sift as it goes in as well. So that's got a bit of a mix. Excellent. The next step is we want to add in our walnuts. Remember, we're doing fig and walnut. Once again, there's nothing stopping you from changing out the nut, changing out the dried fruit as well. So I'm using walnuts, and what I did is I just lightly toasted my walnuts here. So um, I just put them into I put them into a frying pan, set on on medium to low, and just allowed them to toast and toss them. Probably took about five minutes. Just want to give them a little bit of flavour. So I'm putting in. I'm not not even chopping them. We do the chopping later. I'm putting in 60 grams, 60 grams of our dry roasted or dry toasted walnuts, um, which is two ounces. Two ounces of those go in. We are also going to add different types of seeds because we want to give this. Give these crackers some you know some substance so i have pumpkin seeds here also known as papita seeds oh i'm just gonna zero that papita seeds they're gonna go in you want about 40 grams of those 40 grams 1.4 ounces yep perfect let's add some sunflower seeds as well love sunflower seeds we're gonna be putting 20 grams of that which is about just over half an ounce of our sunflower seeds go in and now let's also add in, because we're doing the, doing the fruity part, let's also add in our figs. So once they've, they've been in there and they've had their little 10 minutes of soak, they're going to be a lot easier for you to manage, which is what we're trying to do. So just drain them from the water. And this water you can then discard. You don't need to use that. So that can just go ta over there. See you later. 
And then what you want to do is grab yourself up a knife. Grab yourself up a knife. And just give them a chop. I'm sort of doing them in those types of slices as you can see. Just chopping them through. You don't have to be too exact here because like as I was saying, we will be doing some chopping later on. So those go in. And if you're wondering, that's you know, you're gonna have big pieces of walnut and, and stuff through your crackers. There is a way around, so don't worry. I haven't even taken off the tip. You know, normally with dried figs, people take off the tip. I'm not even doing that. I'm using the whole dried fig. And you, as you can see, these are gorgeous. Look at, look at those. Those are gorgeous dried figs. Absolutely stunning. All right, so that is done. That can then go into our mix there. I'm not going to need my chopping board for a little while, so I'll just put it, in. put it out of the way. Back here, all we're going to do now is start to think about adding in our liquid ingredients to bring everything together. So give that a bit of a stir once again. Our liquid ingredients are very simple. As I said, this is vegan, so this is an egg-free an egg free cracker, even though you just, it just, the, the end result is just fabulous. You wouldn't even think that there isn't any, you know, rich binding egg in there at all. So I'm using some non-dairy milk. You can use unsweetened almond, you could use coconut milk, you could use hemp milk, you could use oat milk, completely up to you. I am using, yes, unsweetened almond milk. So you want to add in 250 mils of your unsweetened almond milk. By the way, if you are writing this down, I will be sharing the recipe as a PDF tomorrow if anyone would like the um, PDF version of it, just in case you think you may have missed a step. So, 250 mils, unsweetened, non-dairy milk goes in there. That's about eight and a half fluid ounces of non-dairy milk. We are going to add our sweetener now, and of course our sweetener is our sweet as inulin, uh, sorry, fiber syrup, what it is, inulin, our sweet as fiber syrup. And uh, we are still in the process and we we're getting very close to being able to, to start to stock this and to sell this as well. We're just waiting for our shipment to arrive. Because of COVID-19, a, a lot of the wharf is still tied up. So we're hoping anytime now we're gonna get our fiber syrup, we're gonna be able to pack it for you guys and we're gonna be able to sell it and it is pure 100% chicory by the way. So this is a prebiotic. And yes, it tastes delicious. So we're gonna be adding into the liquid here, we're gonna be adding 90 grams of our fiber syrup. And remember, because it's a prebiotic, it's good for your gut health, it will not spike your insulin levels, it will not spike your blood glucose, and it will also, um, it's also very, very low um, GI, which is why it doesn't spike all those things and it will give you really, really good gut health. It's pretty crazy, right? It is pretty crazy stuff. So that is 90 grams, three ounces. And the very last one I had, which I didn't actually, where is it? I've got to actually ask Mahi, Mahi, would you be able to pass me the apple cider vinegar? That's the last ingredient that we have. Just, yep, perfect. Thank you. While you're there, you know what you could get out of the freezer too. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and just pop it on there. Thank you. All right, so one teaspoon of ACV apple cider vinegar goes in. Apple cider vinegar is there to help the baking soda, baking soda to do its thing, which is fabulous. Thanks, Mahi. So give it a bit of a stir. Don't need that scales anymore. Give it a bit of a stir. And this is literally your liquid done. That is all it is, right? And I know you're looking at it now, you're going, that is so wet. How will I ever, ever, ever make crackers out of, out of that? I totally get your point. You're like, whoa, that looks really weird. And it does, and it does, but this is the consistency you're after. This is perfect, yeah? It's a little bit lumpy, but it's so, so unusual that you would think to yourself, I can never, how can I make that? into a cracker because normally you know you roll the cracker out and you cut it all up we're not going to be doing any of that today let me go and grab another thing that i forgot i hope it's in here no it's not. do you know where the um loaf tin is by any chance mahi is no. it in the dishwasher oh it's in the dishwasher got it Price is averted. this is what you want forgot to grab it a loaf tin so we are going to bake this to begin with as a loaf and that's why I said it's, it's a little bit um, time consuming because there's two steps that we need to do now, well kind of three steps actually. Firstly, make sure you line your loaf tin, really important because that is obviously a very sticky dough. 
And if you do not line your loaf tin, non-stick baking, ba pa baking paper, get my words out. If you do not line your <laughs> loaf tin, chances are it's going to stick. So you don't want that to happen. So just you know, flop that all in. You don't have to be very precise about this because it's just going to get baked in the oven. And the oven is currently, currently set at 160 degrees, so not too hot, 320 degrees Fahrenheit, 160 degrees Celsius. Uh, set there, I have the, I have the oven tray, uh, oven rack set in the middle, which is always ideal for baking. Don't waste any, give it a bit of a scrape. You don't want to waste any of this mixture because you want to get as many crackers out of this as possible. And um, if you if you follow these instructions, you will be able to get around about 50 crackers, which is a lot cheaper <laughs> than um, buying, you know, pre-made fig crackers at the supermarket and getting about 20. All right, so that's all you're doing, just like this, okay? Just like that, easy, huh? So now it's at this stage, I'm um, just, you know, smooth out the top a little bit. You want to pop that into that oven, that preheated oven, remember 160 degrees Celsius, and you're going to pop that in there for between 40 five to 50 minutes. So there's a bit of baking involved, but we're doing it really gently. We don't want to, we don't want to burn the top um, by any means. So we're doing it nice and gently. So that then goes into the oven. So let me pop that over here. And 40 or 50 minutes later, 45 or 50 minutes, what you're going to get is you're going to get it looking like this, yeah? That's the color you're after. So it's kind of golden. It's not too dark. It's kind of golden, hence why we do it in a, in a in a fairly um, moderate oven, um, kind of golden. It is cooked right through. The way to tell whether it's cooked right through is to grab yourself a little skewer, put it into the middle of the, um, of the loaf, and when you remove that skewer, you don't want to have any dough stuck to it. You can have a few crumbs, crumbs are fine, but you don't want it to be too doughy. So if you find that it's still got dough attached to it, put it back into the oven, but do it in five minute increments. So check it every five minutes with your skewer to see that you're getting, you know, like I said, a few crumbs is fine, but you just don't want it to have too much dough. So take it out of the oven, and then once it's out of the oven, you're gonna rest it, um, you're gonna rest it in the tin for around about 10 minutes, and then leave it on a wire rack to cool for an hour. So once it's at that stage, oh, we've got a question, yes, Mahi? What size tin are you using? What size tin am I using? That so this size. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is how big my tin is. I'm sorry, I don't know. It is a sandwich tin. I'm, I haven't measured it, but like literally it makes that big. Can I put it up there for reference? Where's my reference guide? Yeah, it's, it's an average size tin. Uh, it, it, you know what, the tin size doesn't matter because that is not the end. This is not the end of the cracker story, right? So even if you've got a, a wider tin, you might just want to cook it a um, shorter time. So the tin size does not matter um, that much, just your normal size loaf tin. Um, yours may be um, thinner than mine, so your, your crackers may be a little bit higher than that, but at the end of the day, doesn't really matter. So um, once it has come out of the oven and you've cooled it on its wire rack for an hour, this is where the time consuming part comes in. Now you need to take it out of the, out, off the wire rack and pop it into the freezer. And this is a really, really important step. Like literally take it out like that with a paper around it and pop it into the freezer for three and a half to four hours. You want this to get hard, not solid like frozen, but you want it to get hard. Why do you want it get, to get hard? Because the next stage is where you need to slice it. And in order to facilitate that slicing and make that slicing as easy as possible for you, it's better if this is actually frozen. Well, slightly frozen. Hard is a good way to describe it. So three and a half to four hours, it's been, my one's been in the freezer. You then take yourself up, and I'm using a very long serrated knife. And it, has to, it doesn't have to be this long, but definitely serrated. If you've got a serrated knife, once again, this is gonna facilitate in the slicing. If you don't have a serrated knife, just use your sharpest knife, knife, even if it's this one, use your sharpest knife possible and take your time. Because the, the, the success of whether you get that wonderful crispness when you slice it is all dependent on how thin you slice this loaf. So um, the serrated knife, or also known as a bread knife, 
is the best way to go. And as I was saying, just, just take your time. Take your time. I'm just going to show you what it looks like even before it's... So you can see those lovely walnuts in there. Isn't they gorgeous? All right, so take your time and you want to get as thin slices as possible. And as I was saying, it will really, really, really help if you have frozen your loaf. So four hours seems to be a good freezing time. And you can see that I'm able to get quite easily, even though we've got those walnuts in there and we've got all those figs in there, I'm actually able to achieve a really thin slice. Okay, my sharp serrated knife helps. And if you um, have never owned a serrated knife, just think that this is ideal for slicing any type of bread. It makes bread cutting really easy. But I also use my serrated knife when I carve um, ham, like ham on the bone. It actually works really well when you do ham on the bone too. So nice thin slices. Take your time. You want something along these lines there. You can see that, but you can see those, look at those big gorgeous figures in there. So now we go on to the next stage. Once you've done all your slicing, um, and you know, you, like I was saying, you'll get more crackers if you cut it really, 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 really thin. And my, you know, my first time I did this, I literally was able to get about 50 crackers. So back onto, into the oven they go. So my oven is now set at 150 degrees. So I've dropped it even more, 150 degrees. And what you want to do is you want to line up, line up your crackers on your baking sheet. Of course, we're still doing it with uh, non-stick baking paper. Really important to so line them up. You don't have to leave any space in between because they don't rise or they don't, you know, nothing happens. They don't spread. What we're going to be doing on the second cook, and they're, they're, this is a twice baked. If anyone has ever made biscotti before, you know that they're a twice baked, and this is pretty much what you do. So this is, I suppose, a kind of biscotti, but not really. So um, once you've done that, and you've got your trays, you probably get two trays. You'll get two trays of crackers, maybe even three. So um, when you put your oven on at 150 degrees Celsius, which I believe is about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, once you have it on there, if you've got a fan um, part of your oven settings, make sure you put the fan on, because the fan's gonna help to move the air, the hot air around the oven and these trays, because you can put them all in at the same time, they're gonna cook more evenly. So fill up your trays, have your oven set with a fan if you've got it, which is great. And the very last stage, and this is gonna give you the most wonderful glaze on top of your crackers, is you're gonna take a little bit of inulin, just a couple of tablespoons is all you need. A little bit of inulin. I always like to use my tea strainer for this, I don't know why. I just like to use my tea strainer as a sieve because it's just convenient. And a little bit of inulin and you just want to dust the top of them. And trust me, the glaze that you're going to get off this is phenomenal. It is so, so good. So you glaze the top of them and then these go back into the oven, obviously full tray, and you're going to have them in the oven for their second bake for around about 35 minutes. But keep an eye on them. Because the colour that you're after, let's go back to the original, oh, to the finished product. The colour that you're after, you know, it goes from, it goes from that to that. Do you see the difference? So it goes from a light colour to an absolute golden, deep, deep golden colour. So that is what you're after in the end. And see how thin that? Fantastic, right? Nice and nice and thin. So that is the end product, guys. That's what it looks like when all is said and done. What does it taste like? <laughs> My favorite part of the day. Come back up here, oh, oh, here we go. Favorite part of the day is I get to eat everything. Yay! Um, what does it taste like? So, firstly, we want that crunch because that's what crackers are all about, right? And they stay crispy. So this tin here, I think I made though this, this particular batch Goodness, maybe four or five days ago. So they will last a bit of time. I store them in my tin and I also store them in the fridge because I like them to be fridge cold. Weird, I know. But you don't have to store them in the fridge. You can put them in the pantry. What do they taste like? Mmm. They taste yummy. <laughs> oh. They are not too sweet, but they have a sweetness about them. Hence why I say 
that they make incredible snacks on their own. You can eat them on their own. We've got like just taste like like lovely stuff, right? So nothing stopping you from just grabbing a couple and having them, you know, after you have your main meal, your lunch or something like that. So they do make a good snack food. Notice how I said not a snack, but you can add them on to a meal that you're having quite happily if you just want something a little bit delicious and tasty and maybe slightly sweet, they're good. But as I was saying, I originally designed these to be eaten with cheese. And how do they taste with cheese? It is a revelation. <laughs> they, they, these crackers are going to transform. If you ever think, oh, I'm going to put together a cheese platter, or maybe you're like me, and I don't eat a lot of desserts, so I like to have something a little bit savoury. Sometimes, you know, after our main meal, we'll sit down and we'll, we'll eat a bit of cheese. These crackers will transform <laughs> your cheese board. It will. They are just phenomenal. And you can make so many, like literally that ingredients that I just showed you, that, 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 you know, that loaf, this tin was overfilled. I had to put the rest in another tin because this tin could not, could not cater. This tin could not, could not cater for, um, for, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> I showing off. You're such a, you're such a tease, my hey. That's why I love him. He's such a tease. Um, so yes, this tin was overflowing and I had to put them into a secondary tin because I couldn't fit them all in and that's because I sliced them nice and thin right so give them a try do that little dance too they're good my goodness they're good they're so good um give them a try let me know what you think too I'd love to get your feedback on these especially if you guys know the big crackers I'm talking about which is in like the gluten-free aisle of the supermarket, I think they're in Woolies and Coles here in Australia, and they're, the packet's about that big, and but they're they're kind of off, they're rounder crackers, really dark in colour, taste amazing, but even on special, they're like four dollars fifty for you know for twenty, you now get to make these. It is pretty exciting. They are pretty delicious. As I was saying, I'd love to have your feedback on them, um, and let me know if you try different seeds different nuts, different fruit, because it's all going to really um, help to just change the flavor. You keep the base, you keep all the, all the dry ingredients the same. We can even change the flowers if you want to, but you're gonna change the flavor with apricot, or maybe you're gonna put some goji berries. I think it's complete, actually, you know what? Stay away from the goji berries. They don't um, bake very well. Stay away from them, but there's nothing stopping you from doing apricot. That would be really nice. Okay, we got a question. Can you use dates? Sorry, I put this in my mouth before the question was finished. The question was, can you use dates instead of um, instead of figs? Yes, you can. And um, dates are a great option because they're a lot cheaper if you're using dried dates. They're a lot cheaper than figs and apricots as well. Um, I mean, at a pinch, you could even do them with like sultanas or something like that. Cranberries. Um, cranberries. Yes, you could do them with cranberries. Any type of dried fruit that hasn't had any added sugar, make sure you check your labels, most definitely, because you just want, dried fruit doesn't need added sugar, yet so many companies do it because, I don't know, what a waste of time, right? Dried fruit are sweet enough on their own. So um, there you go, cracker recipe will be shared tomorrow if you'd like a printed PDF version, all of your own. For some of you who have been writing down the recipe, off you go. <laughs> Go make them. They are literally, yeah, they are fabulous. I'm not overstating this at all. And please don't forget, we have a special going on right now. Bridget's Healthy Kitchen Cookbook. The yellow book is now nearly 45% off its original price because we only have a couple of hundred copies left. If you want a copy, go to bridgetscookbook.com and you can order your copy. And for our Australian um, viewers, you can order more than one copy and it will not affect your postage. How many can you order up to Mahi? And it won't no, no, affect the postage? It the postage a little bit. Just go by what happens on Okay, the... I'll take but that it's... back. Yeah. Mahi said that he, that's, that's not... It's the... just minimal right now. Ah, it's yeah. mi apparently it's minimal. Postage is minimal for our Australian friends, even yeah, for our New Zealand friends as well. You can order up to four, I believe. And I don't know how much it costs. Yeah. 
apparently you can order up to four cookbooks and the postage still stays very very minimal so um great deals going on right now as soon as that book sold out it will be no more which is sad but exciting as well at the same time so thank you for joining me we are off for a family lunch now i'm taking my crackers with me for a little car snack <laughs> Until next time, um, I hope you stay well and stay safe, and we will see you back here again in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Take care, guys. Bye.